So starting off this list strong, in at number 10, let's talk about the 1954 meteorite that fell from space and it actually hit someone. This right here is Anne Elizabeth Fowler Hodge. She became a part of history when she survived being struck by a fragment of a meteorite. I mean, how many people can say that? The Silicago meteorite is the first documented extraterrestrial object to have injured a human being. So let me tell you guys what happened. A piece of this meteorite crashed through the roof of a farmhouse located in Alabama and it bounced off a large wooden console radio and then it hit Hodges while she was napping on the couch. Imagine like that's how you woke up. You woke up by being hit by a piece of meteorite that came from outer space. This made headline news and I was looking into what happened to that meteorite because maybe that woman can sell it and become super super rich. Well, I'm not exactly sure on how much they sell for but uh, probably a lot right but this meteorite was actually confiscated by the police who turned it over to the United States Air Force so yeah this woman lucked out I don't know why she wasn't able to keep it. In our ninth spot, we have the alien. And guys, here's just your little friendly reminder to hit that thumbs up button. In 2017, a man in Cusco made a pretty terrifying discovery in the southern desert of Peru. The artifact he found looks exactly like a tiny mummified alien head. An x-ray concluded that the skull had very alien type features. The skull had angled eyelids with shallow eye sockets, two nostrils, and a narrow slit type mouth. Now, whoever was in possession of the skull actually covered it in a type of clay. So that's what you see on the top of it, which makes it appear to look more like an alien. Researchers discovered that it is indeed a real skull but they don't know what it belonged to. So it may just be that this skull belonged to a real life alien from space. And at number eight, we have a piece of the moon. It's always scarier taking pieces of the moon because you just never know what type of airborne bacteria can live on it. There was actually a lunar meteorite found in Northern Africa not too long ago. And just a tiny piece of it sold for more than $600,000. Imagine a piece of the moon just fell into your backyard making you instantly a millionaire. There hasn't been a long term human exposure to the lunar environment but apparently the exposure to lunar dust can actually result in severe health risks from direct exposure or exposure from over time. So saying that whoever owns a piece of the moon hopefully they're keeping it well contaminated. Alright number 7 you guys saw it in the intro of this video you saw a little clip of it but let's talk about the 2017 which was uh, not too long ago while well, I'm talking about the discovery of the Uma Uma which was the first interstellar object ever detected in our solar system. Aumuamua, hopefully I'm pronouncing it right, probably not, but in Hawaiian, it actually translates to first time visitor from far away. Of course, when this object was made public, millions of people questioned, is it aliens? Others asked, where did it come from? Or what does this mean for us? Could this be an invasion on Earth? Well, scientists from Harvard University believe yes. This could actually be signs of alien civilization. When you hear about a bold claim like that, coming from Harvard scientists, it actually makes you wonder. When Aumauma traveled through our solar system, it actually didn't travel on a normal path. And as you know, as normal objects would travel in, and it's usually due to the sun's gravity, but instead it, it made its own path. So it makes us think maybe this thing was powered by some sort of thrusters. So it could be plausible that it was a spacecraft. Number six, we have a satellite that fell to Earth. Have you guys heard the story of the Cosmos 954? Well, me neither. I had to do the research for this one. Well, back in January 24th in 1978, a Soviet satellite malfunctioned, which prevented a safe separation of its onboard nuclear reactor, so pieces of the cosmos entered Earth, shattering around northern Canada. Now, this is pretty messed up. Luckily, no one was killed by this. Just imagine if, like, North Korean satellite crashed on American soil. I mean, that might spark World War III. So, there's actually a law that everyone has to follow when it comes to space. So under the terms of the 1972 Space Liability Convention, whoever launched an object into outer space 
is liable for damages caused by that object. So saying that, the Canadian government billed the Soviet Union over six million dollars for the cost of the cleanup and also for additional compensation for future unpredicted expenses. But the USSR paid just three million dollars. From a failed USSR satellite to something that you would never expect coming from space. Or should I say you wouldn't expect someone coming from space. An alien? Well at number five let me introduce you guys to Fearless Felix who is not an alien. He's just a crazy person. Jack away. Is this real life right now? That is absolutely insane. Why? I have been skydiving, but I jumped from like eight to 10,000 feet. Felix jumped from over 128,000 feet. This guy is absolutely nuts. I think this guy almost reached the moon. Okay, may maybe not quite. <laughs> this guy wasn't inside of Earth and when he jumped, but luckily for him, it was a huge success. Okay, let me take you guys over to Mongolia in at number four. There was this two ton object that crashed to the earth near the Mongolian capital back in 2019. This object was added to the MUFON witness database, which is actually the UFO network database. I didn't know there was a UFO database. How many aliens are on it? So people are actually believing this foreign object might be a UFO. The object looks like it has a rocket or a jet engine. It seems like the object came crashing down in a field of cows and no one knows what it is. On Reddit people believed that it might be a hydrogen tank and a lot of people think that this picture might actually be fake because one person pointed out where is the crater that a heavy and large object would create. I mean, that is a pretty valid point. It's time to time travel for a sec in at number three. Let me take you guys back like 80,000 years ago. I know it's a long time. And let's talk about the Huba meteorite that came crashing down on Earth. It wasn't until 1920 when a farmer found it on his field. Well, this thing weighs 60 tons and it is known to be the largest known meteorite to be found. Today, it has been turned into a national monument. So now it's a great tourist attraction. Moving into number two, let's talk about the meteorite that changed the history on Earth, like literally. More specifically, well, let's talk about the massive meteorite that might have been responsible for the extinction of the dinosaurs. If you guys don't believe this theory, what wiped out the dinosaurs, let me know in the comment section below and be as stupid as you guys want. I'll, I'll, I'll see what you guys type down there. Okay, that asteroid that you guys saw must have been huge if it left no dinosaurs behind. It is believed that the asteroid or comet was about 11 to 81 kilometers long, which is super massive. Finally, number one, I saved the scariest for last. NASA actually predicts that in 2023, there's going to be an asteroid that is on a collision course with Earth that can do some pretty serious damage. The asteroid is twice the size of Big Ben, and uh, I looked up Big Ben, and Big Ben is massive. <laughs> and then imagine Big Ben, and then times it by two, and then adding like fire all around it. That can ruin a whole city. Imagine if that hit like a dense city like New York, or what about if it hit like Shanghai, China? A population of over 24 million people. That can wipe out everyone. My biggest question right now is how accurate is NASA? Um, I'm hoping that they're not too accurate. But then again, if NASA wasn't accurate, I don't know if that would be more scarier. Number 10, space balls. Over the course of decades, humans have begun to clog up the Earth's surrounding area with space junk. Defunct projects, satellites, broken or discarded pieces of spacecrafts, it will become a serious problem at some point and it's beginning to show. There have been many instances now of strange metallic balls crashing into the ground and being found in multiple countries. Mexico, Spain, Vietnam, Namibia, Australia, and many others. They hurtle towards the Earth and some have crashed a little too close for comfort. Most of these mysterious objects seem to just be auxiliary fuel tanks from satellites that were discarded or crashed nearby, and they fell off early, landing in a completely different place than was planned. But some of these, like the one in Mexico, still require more investigation as they don't match any of the parts that we would have expected to be entering our atmosphere. This one even has an antenna and reportedly fell from the sky while making strange noises, but was not accompanied by any fire, like a lot of debris entering the atmosphere would have. So where did these things come from then? 
Moving into number 9, we have the Roswell UFO incident that took place in 1947. Take a look at this. This came crashing down to Earth, and if you search this into Google, you can find these images as well. Clearly looks like an alien, and also you can see more UFO pictures. Can this really be a UFO crash site? Well, there are obviously many conspiracy theories around this crash, because the US military stated that it is a United States Army Air Force balloon crash, while others say that this might be one huge cover up and it's actually an alien spacecraft. What do you guys believe? I'm going with it might be an alien spacecraft. Number eight, struck by a space rock. All right, we've got two stories here, and you can either think of them as the result of a curse or karma or cosmic coincidence, but either way, these two women had a bad day. In 2001, Lottie Williams was exercising in a park in Tulsa, Oklahoma, when she looked up and saw a great ball of fire in the air. It was a rocket coming back towards Earth. She watched it approach, and as it got larger in the sky, she expressed her worry to her friends, but then it broke up into pieces, and it was no longer visible to her. A few moments later, she felt what she described as a tap on her shoulder, and and then something fell to the ground. This small blackened piece of metal had fallen from the rocket and just grazed her, and it could have been a lot worse, but she walked away being the first person to be hit by man-made space debris. But another woman was not as lucky. On November 30th, 1954, Ann Hodges was napping in her Alabama home when a piece of meteorite crashed through her roof and struck her in the side. It left a three foot wide hole in her roof and also left a massive bruise on her thigh and hand where she was hit. Luckily, the damages were only surface level, and though she went to the hospital the next night, it was because of her stress, not the injury. But if the space rock had been a few inches to the side, Anne would not have lived to tell the tale as the first person to be struck by a meteorite. I'm not sure if she's cursed with extremely bad luck or has really good luck. I'll leave that up to you. Number seven, Skylab. Launched by NASA as the first American space station, Skylab was cursed with issues from the moment it launched. The station strapped to a Saturn V rocket sustained severe damage during its deployment, including the loss of the station's micrometeoroid shield and one of its main solar panels, requiring it to have the first ever repair to an object in space, which is pretty cool. But it was again hit with problems when one of the pieces destabilized from orbit earlier than expected and crashed back to Earth. But it doesn't stop there. Due to increased solar activity, Skylab actually ended up falling towards Earth a year earlier than it was supposed to. There was supposed to be a shuttle mission to boost it back into orbit, but the shuttle wasn't ready in time. In an international media frenzy, the Skylab crash was everywhere. People had shirts with targets, contests were made to bring pieces of the wreckage for cash prizes, and people waited for the show. Due to a 4% calculation error on re-entry, the station did not burn up as quickly as expected, and pieces fell into Australia only 300 miles from Perth in an almost completely unpopulated area. Man, talk about a crash and burn. These scientists missed the mark so many times, it's impressive the thing even hit Earth. Number 6. 300 million year old machine part in 2013, a Russian man named Dmitry was adding coal to a fire when he noticed something strange. A shiny piece of metal was sticking out of the rock, and when he broke open the piece of coal, he found what seemed to be a piece of a metal bar with teeth, like a piece of a gear. When analyzed, it was found to be made of aluminum with about 3% magnesium, an alloy that is not generally produced today. Not only that, but further examination shows machining marks, implying that it's a man-made piece, and it's similar to those that we may find in a modern microscope or other small machinery. But no one can explain how a seemingly man-made part appears in a piece of coal that was 300 million years old. So was this thing a remnant of a past unknown civilization? Maybe something from a time traveler or alien? One explanation is that it could have fallen to Earth from a meteorite all that time ago, but it wouldn't explain the fact that it seems man-made. This little hunk of metal continues to baffle scientists today. Number five, nuclear nuisance. The Cosmos 954 reconnaissance satellite launched by the Soviet Union in 1977 had some major issues. The launch went fine. Unlike Skylab, its deployment also went off without a hitch, and this long-term orbital satellite seemed like another mission success for the Soviet space program. It was meant to be circling the globe for years and years, but just three months later, the North American Aerospace Defense Command noticed the satellite making erratic maneuvers, changing the altitude of its orbit by up to 50 miles. And in secret meetings, the Soviet officials 
officials warned their US counterparts that they had lost control over the vehicle. And the system, which was intended to propel the spent nuclear reactor core into a safe disposal orbit, had failed. And just four months after its launch, it fell towards the Earth, right over Canada's Northwest Territories. The Soviets claimed that it had completely disintegrated upon re-entry, but that was not the case, as we discovered a 600 kilometer path of debris leading through the country. And a huge portion of it was radioactive because they failed to launch the reactor out. We Canadians began Operation Morning Light, a recovery effort that lasted over a year and for which we billed the Soviet Union six million dollars, though they only ever paid us three. Many small pieces of debris were collected as well as 12 large portions of the satellite, only two of which were not radioactive. Number four, proof of panspermia. The theory of panspermia is that life did not naturally begin on Earth, but that it began with microbes stuck in space ice that fell to Earth on meteorites. And the amount of debate around this topic is huge. And we have a few examples that may just prove the theory. The Polonarua meteorite was one that fell in Sri Lanka in 2012. And meteorites are always a good find, but this one was different. 12 days after it was witnessed falling through the sky, a scientist published a paper stating that after studying some electron micrographs, his team discovered fossil fossilized diatoms, microscopic phytoplankton inside the meteorite. In addition, his team of scientists reported in a separate article that they are, they are certain that it is a meteorite that originated from a comet that also contained living diatoms. The microbes were remarkably similar to those found on Earth, leading to a debate on whether it was simply contaminated from the Earth's surface. But there is another example with even stronger proof of microscopic alien life. In 2018, a meteorite landed on a frozen lake in Michigan, and when it was examined, thousands of organic compounds that were formed billions of years ago were found. It helped that the quick recovery, along with the cold temperature, kept the water inside frozen for studying. Research is still being done, but this find has thrown the scientific world for a loop. Hopefully the organisms don't leave us with some alien curse or disease. Number three, the Chelyabinsk meteor. Many of us will remember the 2013 meteor that rocked the world. At 20 meters in diameter, it was the largest natural object to enter our atmosphere since the Tunguska event, which destroyed a wide, remote, forested, and, and very sparsely populated area of Serbia. The Chelyabinsk meteor also is the only meteor confirmed to have resulted in many injuries, though they were all from indirect causes. There are many videos of the event and they are truly terrifying, especially when you learn that the meteor was completely undetected until it entered our atmosphere, which caused worldwide panic. The flash as it began to burn up was brighter than the sun, and when it exploded midair, the energy output was equivalent to the atomic weapon used on Hiroshima, sending out a massive shockwave that damaged buildings and was felt and heard for hundreds of miles. All of the 1500 100 people injured were hurt while running or from broken glass or other indirect factors of the meteor. There was even another meteor which was detected to have a close approach on the same day, which was 10 meters larger and flew by us only 16 hours later. Man, February 15th, 2013 was a busy day for meteors. Number two, Oumuamua. Discovered by the University of Hawaii's PanSTARRS-1 telescope in 2017, Oumuamua is the first known interstellar object to visit our solar system. It was originally classified as a comet, but there were no signs of cometary activity after we witnessed it slingshot past the sun at a blistering speed of 196,000 miles per hour, or 87.3 kilometers per second. It was briefly classified as an asteroid until new measurements found it was accelerating slightly, which is very strange for any interstellar body. This massive cigar-shaped object is nearly a quarter mile long, or 400 meters, and its elongated shape is unlike anything we've witnessed in our solar system. Observation has shown that it may have come from the star system of Vega, though with the speed it was moving, it would have taken over 300 million years to make the journey to our solar system, and Vega was nowhere near that position at that time, leading to further questions. Many scientists believe that this could actually be an alien superstructure, as its strange journey and acceleration are studied more and more. Paul Kotis, manager of the Center for Near-Earth Object Studies at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, said that it's a strange visitor from a faraway star system, shaped like nothing we've ever seen in our own solar system neighborhood. Whether it's just an interstellar asteroid or someone coming to see what's up with Earth, we may never know, as it's being launched away from us after making a slingshot maneuver around our sun, the angle and trajectory of which some use as proof as the object being controlled or even driven by some. Something. And finally, we reach our number one, the Hypatia Stone. The Hypatia Stone is one of the single greatest astronomical discoveries that we have ever made. Found in the Sahara Desert by Ali A. Barakat, this is no ordinary meteorite, but one that contains the remnants of a rare type of supernova. Some have even described it as a supernova in a bottle. 
Named after the ancient mathematician and astronomer Hypatia, who is the first female scholar in her field to have her life and accomplishments recorded, overcoming sexism in the process, scientists are still learning more about its origins. It's believed that the stone was born in what is known as a Type 1a supernova, a rare kind of supernova where a dying star or white dwarf begins to leach energy off of a nearby star and regains energy in the process. These so-called vampire stars circle each other, until the white dwarf has recovered enough energy to reignite the stellar reaction actions and explodes in a massive cloud of dust and pure energy, shooting things imbued with strange elements out into the ether. Measuring the metals found inside the stone is how we verified that it came from this kind of supernova, and that it crashed to Earth nearly 28 million years ago after being launched through space by the explosion. Having a supernova in our hands has helped us answer so many questions about the physics of space, but if you ask me if there was one interstellar item that could have an alien curse, it's the rock that contains pieces of a rare supernova. Sounds like something an alien from Doctor Who would need to power their death machine or something. Starting off this countdown, we have the Dropa Stones. In 1938, archaeologist Dr. Chipote led an expedition near the Bayan Har Mountains in China. That's when they came across some interesting caves. These caves held evidence that ancient life once lived in them. After searching the caves, they found weird disks buried under thick layers of dust. These disks resembled phonograph records. Researchers dated them to be over 10,000 years old. Now, they didn't play music like a typical record, but instead they had hieroglyphics carved into them. When studied, it told a story about a spaceship that crashed into the mountains. Aboard the spaceship were people that called themselves the Dropa. Then later on, the disks were sent to Moscow for further studying. That's when they were placed on this special turntable, and the discs would vibrate or hum in a weird rhythm, as if an electric charge was passing through them. After that, research on the discs stopped. Or some believe research continued and they found slash contacted alien life, which they just didn't tell the public. Either way, this is said to be one of the most mysterious artifacts in the world. Number 9. WTF in 2013, the Catalina Sky Survey at the University of Arizona spotted an object in the night sky, and it seemed to have some weird properties. The object didn't move as though it was solid like rock, but it seemed to possibly be hollow. And it had a density of about 10% that of water, and it seemed to be about 6.5 feet in diameter large enough to house a person. But this didn't match any of the space junk that space agencies had been tracking for the previous years, and adding even more to the confusion, the object seemed to disappear from sight, and it was not seen again until two years later, when it was officially given the name WT1190F, or WTF for short. Pretty fitting. Video and photos were taken of the object's re-entry into Earth's atmosphere, which was a scientific feat on its own, but the object was never recovered. It is assumed that it burned up from the immense heat of re-entry, but many people believe that it crashed into the ocean and whatever was inside was either captured or lies in wait at the bottom of the sea. Like those UFOs NASA admits that they found. Remember those? That was crazy. Moving on to number 8, we have the Wedge of Ayud. Back in 1974, construction workers in Romania were working in a village in Ayud when they came across some pretty weird objects. These objects were buried 30 feet in the sand by a river. Two of the objects were bones from mastodons, which are very distant relatives of an elephant. I mean, that's cool and all, but the thing that really caught their attention was this mysterious wedged shaped object that was located by the bones. This object contained 89% aluminum, 6% copper, and a total of 12 elements all together. Here's the thing, aluminum was discovered around 1825, yet this wedge lay next to bones that are from 11,000 years ago. The timeline just doesn't add up. The wedge itself is theorized to be around 10,000 years old. People believe that this object couldn't have existed way back then. An aeronautical engineer stated that this object looks exactly like a piece of a landing gear for landing aircrafts. This has left researchers to believe that aliens crashed their craft from space maybe 11,000 years ago. In our seventh spot, we have the Rosetta Stone. The Rosetta Stone is a piece of a stone slab found in 1799. It has a message carved into it written in three different types of scripts. You got ancient Egyptian hieroglyphics, Demotic scripts, and ancient Greek. This stone is the key to decipher Egyptian scripts. 
1814, British scientist Thomas Young started studying the stone and made some progress on cracking it. But it wasn't until 1822 to 1824 that the hieroglyphic code was finally cracked. This was done by French linguist Jean Francois Champollion. It's hypothesized that the slab was created in Egypt in 196 BC, but we still don't know who created it. Now, this one is more of a conspiracy, but it's actually thought that the Rosetta Stone was made by aliens and they delivered it to us from space. Obviously, there's no solid evidence to support this. In fact, archaeologist Paul Wasson believes the Rosetta Stone has lessons to teach us about creating a message that will allow us to communicate with aliens. Because you know, we can't just assume that aliens speak English. In our sixth spot, we have the UFO tooth wheel. This is another artifact that is said to have come from aliens in space. So basically, back in the day, a Russian man was using coal to heat his home when he saw something sticking out of a piece of coal. He reported his findings, and researchers said it looked like a tooth wheel to some device. After tests were run on it, it was discovered that it was composed of 98% aluminum and 2% magnesium. Now remember what I said before? Humans discovered how to first make aluminum in 1825. But the piece of coal this artifact was found in was 300 million years old. So how is that even possible? In fact, the tooth wheel resembles parts that we currently use in microscopes and electronic devices. Again, back in the day, they didn't have any of those devices. So what the heck? Scientists are still running tests on this object to one day figure out who created it and figure out what its original purpose was. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with the iron beads. Back in the day, it was found that ancient Egyptians created iron beads. They were carefully hammered into thin sheets and then they would roll these into tubes. Then they would string them together and make a necklace. While studying them, they found the necklaces were over 5,000 years old. It was also revealed that the beads were made out of pieces from meteorites and then they would hammer that down. Not only that, but it was revealed that the Egyptians had a more advanced understanding of metalsmithing than we originally thought. Moving on to number four, we have the valuable meteorite. There's a meteorite out there that is more valuable than gold. It was April 23rd, 2019, and a weird colorful orb flew across the skies of Costa Rica. It was orange and green in color. This object was about the size of a washing machine. And then, just like that, it broke up into pieces that got scattered between two villages. One of the pieces was discovered by a woman named Marcia Campos Munoz. She heard the rumble and saw something crash down on her property. She was one of the few people to find a piece of this meteorite. Now, meteorites show up all the time on Earth, so what's so special about this one? Well, it turns out they belong to a rare class called carbonaceous chondrites. They formed when the solar system was still developing. It's believed that these pieces of meteorites will help us figure out what early solar system life was like. Moving on to number three, we have the ancient battery. Back in 1936, outside of Baghdad, a weird discovery was made. They discovered a small clay jar with an iron rod hanging in a copper cylinder in it. This was then soldered shut and sealed with asphalt. Upon analyzing it, it was discovered to produce small amounts of electricity. In fact, researchers said it looks like an ancient battery. However, we still don't know who created this and what its purpose was. But many people believe that this was a battery from an alien spacecraft that crashed down on Earth several thousands of years ago. Aliens are said to be very advanced species, so it could be that they figured out batteries and electricity way before humans ever did. Coming in at number two, we have the alien spacecraft. In 2017, a Hawaiian man with a telescope spotted this weird object leaving the solar system. This object was named Oumuamua, and it's considered the first known interstellar object detected passing through the solar system. Here's the thing. Many people believe that this thing is an alien spacecraft. Let me explain. This thing looks like a space rock, but it's not a comet or asteroid. It's too small and oddly shaped to be an asteroid. The thing is long and shaped like a rocket. No asteroids that we know of are shaped like that. Not only that, but astronomers thought the first space rock to enter our solar system would be a ball of ice and rocks. A 
comet. But usually there's a cloud of dust and gas surrounding comets, and this object doesn't have that. So then what on earth is it? On top of that, it's said to emit blue colors from it. As a result, rumor has it that it's actually an alien spacecraft. And in our number one spot, we have the Hapatia Stone. In 2013, a weird stone made its way to Earth from space. The stone has managed to leave scientists baffled. They claim it's unlike any other extraterrestrial rock ever found. In 2015, while analyzing the stone, they found it was not part of a meteorite or comet. So they were puzzled as to where it came from. Researcher Jan Kramer said, and I quote, the stone's matrix contains a high amount of very specific carbon compounds, called polyaromatic hydrocarbons, or PAH, a major component of interstellar dust, which existed even before our solar system was formed. Meaning, this stone is super old. Like, it was around before the sun and planets had formed. It's mind-blowing, and they still haven't found out all about it. 